Hey guys, Scott here. I have finally finished my Bleed Gargoyle Twin Blade build. And uh, I thought I would kind of showcase how it actually works and how to build it yourself if you want to do something a bit different. Um, I've been making this for about the past week now, and yeah, it's, it's pretty much done. I originally started with the Godskin Peeler, but I wanted to go a strength-based weapon instead because um, it is just simply easier to get more base damage out of it because you're always going to be two-handing Twin Blades. You don't really want a one-hand Twin Blades because the one-handed Twin Blade moveset is basically just like a straight sword. Um, it's just not really worth using at all. Now, if you have two Twin Blades, the jumping attack hits multiple times, which is neat, but Twin Blades are meant to be two-handed. This gives you that multi-hit moveset, and multi-hit is very uh, accentuated by bleed because each hit has the same amount of bleed buildup. So I have a blood-infused Twin Blade here that's going to have 134 blood buildup, which is nuts. Now, to make that blood, uh, or the bleed buildup even faster, I have 50 Arcane. Uh, that is the soft cap for scaling bleed for weapons that scale in arcane. So 50 arcane is usually where you want to stop at. Um, now, if it's like the bloody heal list or something like that, a weapon that actually has straight up like arcane scaling for the physical damage, then it's worth kind of going past that. But uh, if it's a blood infused weapon, typically you stop at 50. And then I just have 40 strength because that 40 strength becomes 50 with my flask. And then when I two hand it, it becomes 75 strength. So I have plenty of damage there. A basic 50 figure. Uh, now, the one thing you're going to need for a twin blade build almost assuredly is poise now poise is useful on every build don't get me wrong but for twin blades it is like triple important because frankly twin blades just have absolutely no range whatsoever which means you need to be right up in people's faces in order to actually hit them with it so that kind of means you have to have the ability to trade and not get stunned um because that's just really the only way you're going to get that giant damaging combo now the running attacks on the twin blades are pretty good at roll catching and things like that like this is pretty good but still the range is not nearly as good as something uh, as like you know a cross naginata or something like that and that is probably the most meta version of the bleed build right now it's two cross naginatas and one of them has seppuku um it is extremely extremely strong it's basically this build but with triple the range so uh yeah it's extremely extremely good so typically here, the way we play uh, with this level of poise, we just sort of get in range and we pressure them to do something. And then we just pretty much trade and usually out trade them. And he does have a shield that can parry. So oh, never mind. He put it away. I believe I, I uh, poised through this. So we just have to let him get in range. Let's do this by running up in his face. Now we try to trade and we heavily out trade the shit out of him and he's dead in one hit. So yeah, that's how the build works. And uh, honestly, even if that guy had 15 more vigor, I'm pretty sure he still would have died. Now, is this fair? No, of course not. Uh, it's not fair at all. Bleed is extremely overtuned in this game. And uh, y y you know what the sad thing is? I was thinking about like, you know, all, all the builds that I'm making, you know, narrated thought duels on and I'm making build guides and all this stuff. I'm trying to, um, you know, I, I tried to think outside the box for my first build. I just did, you know, pure mage, pure sorceries, no weapons. Then I tried to think outside the box of the second build, pure incantations. And, you know, and then I did, a, you know, just a, a pure strength build with like callbirds and stuff like that. No matter what I do, the build is broken. Every single time I make a build, people say it's broken. And for good reason. They are all pretty broken. And it's because the entire game is just broken. <laughs> There's nothing I can do to not make a broken build unless I intentionally make shitty stat choices or I just, like, intentionally I don't upgrade my weapons or something. Pretty much everything you do in this game can be extremely broken. And there's just no getting around it, so... Let's just accept that the game's broken right now until this game gets some balance patch or something. Look at that. We're going to have a bleed off. This is going to be us running into each other and just smacking each other until one of us dies. Now, he has black flame protection on, which is going to reduce his damage taken by a fuck ton. But I don't care. I think I still out-trade him, even if he does a jumping attack. Let's see. He's going to probably keep doing a jumping attack because that's the only good part about two twin blades is the jumping attack. Other than that, it's just pretty awful. I'm going to try to roll catch here. Didn't get it. I think I trade with a jumping attack. Let's see. I kind of want to see. I wanna, I, I, when he runs at me, I'm going to swing. No, I don't win that trade. <laughs> My simple lead battles are so dumb. I wanted it. That was more just me sciencing something. I wanted to see if I could tank it. I don't know how that didn't hit. Yeah, that was more just me sciencing something. I wanted to see if I could tank it. Typically, you do not want to tank jump attacks. They're going to fuck you up really bad. I'm trying to, like, punish the follow-up if he does the third hit in the combo. So I'm waiting for him to swing. Uh, I think we just go in. That was good spacing by me. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was just me basically going against a slightly inferior version of the build. I think the uh, power stancing of Halberds 
or I'm sorry, of Twin Blades is not quite as good because this just simply just hits more. I'm hitting faster with that than he's hitting faster with that moveset. Um, the only good part about that is the jumping attack, which does hit a bunch of times and will probably proc bleed on one hit. But constantly jumping at people can be risky, especially if they have a vertical swinging weapon like a halberd will basically just knock you out of the air and you will get your shit pushed in. So um, the whole point of this version of the build is to stack poise and get right up in their face and just keep pressuring them until they swing. And then you just trade and do eight bajillion affinity bajillion damage. And that's just how it works. Oh, here's the here, right here. This is a good example of what to do when we go against someone that, uh, you know, can't I, I can't trade with them because he's got ultra great swords. Oh, by the way, I didn't even go over it. I have the uh, Crimson Amber Medallion for health, Bird Tree's favor, because, you know, that just simply does everything. Bull Goat's Talisman for poise, and then the Great Jar's Arsenal to wear some heavier armor. I have Veteran's Armor, and then Scaled Helm, and then Bull Goat for uh, legs and hands. Okay, so uh, this I cannot, absolutely cannot power, or I cannot tank this whatsoever. He's also got, uh, <laughs> he's also got, Royal Knight's Resolve on that, so I am not tanking that hit. I am waiting for that to go. Okay, let's try to punish this. I mean, it's Bloodhound Step, so I doubt I can punish it. Oh, he poised through that. Oh, fucking backstab grab again instead of hitting. I hate to see it, man. You'll notice I'm not trying to punish him when he, uh... I'm not trying to punish the jumping attack, because typically by the time the jumping attack actually fails, or, you know, lands on the ground, if you begin your swing at that point, uh, his on his screen, he will have already begun rolling away before it finishes. So what I typically do is try to punish the rolling attack. In like I, I, after he jumps, I wait for him to roll and then I punish the roll instead. That's typically the better way to do it. But I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. There's honestly not too much to this build. This is a very very uh, low IQ required build. You just stack poise, walk up in their face, and just pretty much press R1, and you'll typically outtrade almost everything except another bleed build. Um, things that counter this build. Uh, there are things that counter it, like the current infinite stability great shield glitch, where you stack the talisman and you just don't take any stability damage whatsoever. Um, that can kind of trade with it. The only way that works is if they have a bleed weapon. If they have like a bleed rapier, they will actually outtrade you and win. So that is one of the counters to it, but it's also a broken thing. Um, yeah, other than that, I haven't really found much of a counter. I don't really know what else counters this. Okay, let's go. Uh, he's got whips, so he pretty much stands absolutely no chance of doing anything ever. I just, this whips just don't even do poise damage. I don't even really need armor for that one. You just walk up to him and smack him. Um, I don't know how many more duels I have to do to prove the point of this build and how incredibly bustedly strong it is, but uh, I'm probably going to be moving on from this build because it doesn't even feel rewarding to, to really play. I don't have to do spacing really or anything like that. I just walk up in people's faces, use superior poise, and just start wanting them in the face. I'll just do uh, one more. This guy's got Giga Sword, so I'll actually have to do, I guess, a little bit of spacing. Pretty much the only time you actually have to do spacing and playing the game is when they have ultra great weapons that you cannot poise through, basically, no matter what. And uh, he's got that, so we're going to have to do that. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the build, guys. Um, I don't really think I have any other uh, things to add. It's it's very simple. <laughs> there's no, uh, there's nothing else to it. You just Sabuki yourself on a very powerful bleed infused gargoyle twin blade. You got the stats for it with arcane and everything. That's it. That's pretty much the whole build. Let this be our final battle. And uh, I will have to be careful because if he has Bloodhound Step, he's just gonna. What the hell? No Bloodhound Step. Oh my god, he's rolling. He's gonna do crouching attack, so we have to try to uh, punish this. Should be a hit. He's got enough poise to take one hit, but now his poise health is gone. Get the hell out of here. Um, we can parry this now. I don't have a parry shield, though. Put that away. Thank you. This boy's health is re uh, not regenerated. One more hit. He's dead. I'm going to roll just to be safe in case there's some phantom range there. Ah, I'm going to wait out this determination. I, I don't want to risk it. That would hurt a lot. There he goes. Gone now. Now I don't really care. I'm going to need to roll all rolling R2 or running R2 instead. So, yeah, you pretty much just do R1s. Uh, this R2 is cool. It's just a lot slower. The running R2 is not bad. If you decide to use the Godskin uh, Peeler instead, I do think this running R2 is superior because it does hit more times. It's a unique R2. It hits like five times and that'll proc bleed a lot faster. But the stat uh, requirements are a bit different and it's harder to scale dex than strength. So, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. Super simple build. Not much to it. Not much thought into it at all, really. Stack poise. Get in people's face. Press R1. They explode. 
Fleet is fair and balanced. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching.